Hello everyone and welcome. In this series of videos, we are going to look at a real-world client requirement scenario. And we'll try to identify the challenges around the task, explore the possible solutions, and discuss approaches for the solution. And while uh, doing all that, we'll adhere best practices to provision suite of cloud resources and design this solution keeping DevOps at heart. That is, automate the provisioning to make it highly scalable, consistent, and flexible in nature using infrastructure as code practice. Hi, my name is Mayank, and together along with you, I intend to practice DevOps concepts by implementing hands-on real-world scenario solutions. So, without any further ado, let's get this learning started. So let's just quickly go through the agenda to understand what uh, will be covered over these uh, series of videos. So we'll be um, looking at a problem statement and we will, we will start with setting up a new AWS account. Uh, we will architect IAM considerations uh, using best practices. We will provision the resources inside our AWS account using Terraform. And later we'll also cover AWS organization service for consolidated billing and project isolation. We'll, before that, we'll also discuss why there is a need of an, um, a, a service like AWS organizations. Moving on, now would be a good time uh, for us to get introduced to the problem statement that we have at our hand for now. So olivetech.io is a group of data scientists and developers who have their dev application stack ready in their dev environment and they want to move to AWS. You have been hired as a DevOps architect and tasked to create uh, the account and create it in a, in, in a way that uh, you can accommodate all the organization units and map all the organization units that are currently existing in the organization, olivetech.io. And uh, according to that, to have a strategy which will ease the central management and security uh, delegation at the same time. So uh, when, we have, when we look at the problem statement, the first service that pops in our head straight away is AWS IAM. Uh, IAM empowers us to create users, groups, roles, and policies either using console, CLI, or API calls. Th these are all kinds, uh, the kinds of identities that IAM uh, service provides in AWS. It must be noted that the problem statement requires us to create a solution for multiple accounts. So first of all, we'll dive into understanding the need of multiple accounts and why companies generally go for such kind of setup or require such kind of setup. Um, we'll also discuss the challenges uh, faced adopting either a single ap account approach and on the contrary, challenges faced adopting a multi-account approach. Now, when I say multi-account multi approach, it should be understood that multi-account approach is the multi-account standalone approach where each account has its own resources, own billing, and uh, the project isolation as well. So now that we have a fair idea of the problem statement in front of us and what AWS service we have at our hands to start uh, architecting the solution, let's take some time to quickly address uh, different approaches uh, to create the AWS account. So starting with one account for all approach, which becomes the default case when you first create an AWS account. Suppose we have three to five projects running in AWS account. We will run into challenges, uh, firstly due to hitting the soft limits, like number of VPCs in an account. But that isn't the biggest challenge of all, of all to be honest. Um, the toughest challenge which comes uh, along uh, with the maturity of the platform and if your account uh, is growing organically is to have a single account and manage it centrally without impacting the other projects and environments and resources and if you want to have such isolation 
uh, then you will have to bring in a lot of complexity in your design while uh, architecting IAM policies for resource-based or identity-based purposes. And generally we see that enterprises have different organizational units or sometimes they are called departments or teams, whatever you want to call them, working with different compliance rules across the same organization. Different teams, departments may have different password policies, for example, um, and you could have all sorts of interactions, complex interactions between departments. So this is when we start running into blast radius. For sure, single account approach uh, provides everything under one hood advantage, but management of different projects becomes challenging, especially uh, when the number of projects grow and require isolation between them. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is when we start running into blast radius. Blast radius should be thought of an area where you might run into stepping onto a landmine, which is placed underneath. You, you do not know or a junior DevOps engineer or a junior engineer just uh, gives uh, gives some some kind of access which can affect in places under one single account um, which you 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 can't even uh, uh, quickly uh, identify so that becomes a problem um, companies uh, usually and obviously companies create logical boundaries while setting up their accounts for project isolation and reducing the above uh, the earlier mentioned blast radius. In a single account scenario, we already have a huge blast radius due to complexity around interacting with IAM for various projects, as I mentioned earlier, roles and permissions. Now, what, what solution do we, do we have against it? A simple solution we have is that we can create multiple standalone accounts. That means it provides, it, it if it's a standalone account, it automatically provides us a very well controlled access because everything is autonomous and that means each of one of those projects can stand alone without impacting any other resources or projects under which which obviously are uh, in a different account it also reduces the blast radius uh, problem for us because what we commit in one account definitely doesn't affect the other accounts and when it's a standalone account obviously you can get around the service limits too and in the end, the billing also gets simplified as it becomes more compartmentalized. We end up having one billing account per AWS uh, account. So even multiple standalone accounts are, are, are a good way to go about it. But then we have to trade off centralized management of all accounts. And it becomes challenging to apply uh, corporate compliance policies or comp uh, corporate compliance rules uh, effectively and centrally. So for uh, looking at that problem, uh, AWS came out uh, with, with, with AWS came out with a service which allowed which allowed uh, establishing establishing multiple accounts and centrally manage them from one account. Um, I'm talking about a AWS organizations. So having established that multiple standalone accounts certainly help business running multiple projects. However, without the centralized governance, we can't use the setup to maintain our enterprise security policies and therefore our corporate governance compliance requirements such as GDPR, HIPAA and PCI. To address this, AWS created the organization's idea. Organizations mean that AWS created an account management service whereby we will be having one account and we'll be calling it a master account. That will allow us to manage centrally all of our different member accounts, which is all of the other accounts that we will create. AWS organization also enables us to invite existing AWS account to join the organization. And when this happens, it means our two main purposes with the organizational model straight away. The first one is the centralized management so that we can uh, further implement hierarchical groups uh, in the form of various various organizational units within our organization. It also enables us to set up a single payment method for all AWS accounts in the organization through consolidated billing. With consolidated billing, we can see a combined view of charges incurred by all of our accounts and as well as we can take advantage of pricing benefits from aggregated usage, such as volume discounts on Amazon EC2 and Amazon 
S3. Uh, we can further benefit from uh, this by driving down the cost as we'll be able to take advantage of things discounted price uh, uh, like on reserved instances and credits. In the following videos, we will cover how we would go about creating the organization, having different accounts, inviting accounts, deleting accounts, and removing accounts from our, from our organization. We'll also, the other, uh, the other uh, application of AWS organization is uh, with respect to creating a landing zone, zone solution. So I've mentioned landing zone a couple of times now, I would, uh, I guess, um, and it, it's a good place for us to have an overview of what a landing zone refers to. With AWS landing zone, you can configure and provision a secure, scalable, automated, multi-account AWS environment, strictly aligned with AWS best practices without having any existing resources. So if you, uh, I mean, if you have a, a if you want to automate the creation of new AWS accounts and quickly launch your new workloads, you can, you can do that using infrastructure as code and AWS organization service. The core elements of AWS landing zone include a multi-account approach with the following multi-account monitoring, security baseline with preventive and detective controls, identity and access management, centralized logging, automation with infrastructure as code, and in the end, we will have an account vending machine and add-ons for an environment extension. So let's just quickly go over the expectations and outcomes. As a DevOps architect, we will have to create a new account by the end of this uh, series of videos. We will uh, talk uh, while creating the account. We will talk about the root account as well. We will talk. We will discuss the IAM policies and how to effectively and efficiently. Uh, uh, apply them for delegation uh, under service control policies. We'll be creating a lot of groups as well. Uh, we'll be go. We'll go ahead and use our infrastructure as code for to create our landing zone, which can be used for various workloads. Uh, we will be having a multi-account setup as well with granular control. So these are the expectations and outcomes that you can exp uh, that you. Uh, can expect by the end of this run of this series of videos. Um, for further for further uh, differentiation, I have uh, divided the the series of this uh, video series into modules, four different modules. In the first module, we'll be emphasizing on how to create a new AWS account, the approaches, the automation, and the security uh, uh, recommendations, best practices to take in consideration while creating an, an a brand new AWS account. In the second module, we'll, be, we'll go and, and explore AWS organization service and deep dive into uh, how to create organizations, how to invite, how to create member uh, accounts, how to create master account, how to invite member accounts and all sorts of things. What are the prerequisites that are required to, uh, to follow this approach? After establishing and understanding AWS organizations, in the third module, we'll dive into using uh, AWS organizations to implement our service control policies for our corporate uh, compliance rules and, and security policies. And in the last uh, module, we'll be looking at creating a landing zone using infrastructure as code, uh, which for which our weapon of choice will be Terraform. Um, but before uh, before doing, every, um, I just wanted to uh, bring it to the notice that setting up the account and IAM policies for access initially can be done easily using AWS Management Console, um, just by uh, navigating around and clicking. Uh, but we will we will not do that. We will not follow that approach. And after the, our first deployment, we will uh, dive into creating the resources and the automation. Uh, using AWS CLI and then further gradually move on to uh, infrastructure as code uh, approach as well so as to we can understand how effective it becomes uh, and how it brings the business value in the organization when you start automating your uh, solutions. 
so as i mentioned before the four the three provisioning strategies that we'll have in front of us to carry out uh, this, uh, this these deployments and uh, the landing zone solution will be console first of all we'll use console uh, to show that it's the easiest way to set up anything you want to uh, in your account but not it's not the idle way and it's only good for once in a while tasks when we start to get into automating and and providing uh, the and speeding up the delivery of our solution we'll get we'll look at uh, strategies using aws cli and infrastructure as code as well so with everything in place i think it's it would be good time that we uh, move on to creating our aws account for our client olivetech.io i'll catch you on the flip side